Joe Walton, also known as Dr. Bones, to the preparedness community. I'm a fellow of the American College of Surgeons and the American College of OBGYN. And along with my lovely wife, Nurse Amy, a nurse practitioner and midwife, we focus on how to help you deal with medical issues in disaster situations where help is not on the way. You can find over 250 articles on our website at www.doomandbloom.net. We also do podcasts and videos like the one you're looking at right now. Now, as a physician, I get a lot of questions about expiration dates on medications and whether drugs should be thrown out once they hit that date. In the preparedness community, most of us accumulate medicines for use in an uncertain future. Now, part of that uncertainty is not knowing when our society will finally enter a full-blown collapse. Even government agencies wonder if all the medical supplies that they've stockpiled over the years will still be effective years after their expiration dates. So let's discuss exactly what expiration dates really mean. Expiration dates have been mandated since legislation was uh, put forth in 1979. That expiration date means that it's the last date that the pharmaceutical company will guarantee that a drug is at 100% potency. That potency, that means that it is as strong as it needs to be to handle the medical condition involved. Except in very rare cases, there's no evidence, no evidence that suggests that there's anything harmful about that medication if used after that date. That means they don't magically become poisonous, or they don't cause you to grow a third eye in the middle of your forehead. Now, now that you know that, the question is whether the drug loses its, its beneficial effects and how fast it does lose those effects. Now, FEMA and the Department of Defense are government agencies that stockpile huge stores, millions of doses of medications for use in the event of a major emergency, such as a natural disaster or some other catastrophe. FEMA has seen massive stores of medicines that they have stockpiled go expire. And so a study was commissioned to find out how effective these expired medications still work. The study is known as the Shelf Life Extension Program, SLEP. Now, the, this program has evaluated over 100 medications that were expired for at least two to 10 years at the time that they were evaluated. This includes many commonly used antibiotics and other drugs that could be very useful for you in the preparedness community in a long-term survival situation. Now, after extensive study, the vast majority of these medications were found to be completely effective for their intended use, including some that were 10 years beyond their expiration date. Now, in the most recent swine flu epidemic a few years back, the SLAP, SLEP rather, granted a full use extended or, uh, extension authorization for the antiviral drug Tamiflu that lasted for an additional five years beyond its expiration date. The other medications though, even though they have been proven to be effective after their expiration date, have not received such extensions and that is a shame because this information would be useful to millions of people in times of trouble. I first wrote about this situation in my survival blog article on J July 28, 2010, called The Doctor's Thoughts on Antibiotics, Expiration Dates, and Teotihuacan. Now, since that time, I find I can no longer access the results of the study as it now takes special access to get into the website that has the information. You can still find it if you look hard enough. For example, if you go to your local medical library, you'll find it in the July 2006 issue of the Journal of Pharmaceutical Sciences. Now, new evidence of breakthrough scientific article has been published in the respected journal, The Archives of Internal Medicine. It just came out in the last couple of days. And this article was put together by a doctor of pharmacology at the University of California, San Francisco, uh, named Lee Cantrell. He's a doctor of pharmacology. He belongs to the School of Pharmacy, and he and his colleagues used special tests to measure the amounts of active ingredients in some very special expired medications. 
These medications expired 28 to 40 years ago and were found in a retail pharmacy in their original unopened packaging. Now, to meet U.S. Food and Drug Administration standards, an active ingredient must be present in 90% to 110% of the amount that's indicated in the label. Drug expiration dates normally are set between 12 months to 60 months after the drug is produced, even though many compounds can persist far longer. Now, in the new analysis, 12 of the 14 active ingredients in the eight medications studied persisted in concentrations that were 90% or greater of the amount indicated on the label. These 12 compounds retained, that what that means is these 12 compounds retained their full potency for at least 336 months beyond the expiration date. That's 28 years. Eight of the 12 actually were completely potent for a full 480 months after the expiration date. That's 40 years. Only aspirin and amphetamine actually failed to reach the 90% cutoff. Now the new findings are consistent with the efforts of the Shelf Life Extension Program, which unofficially has extended the expiration dates on 88% of 122 drugs tested so far. And, and now the new extensions range from 66 to 278 months. You don't know about this yet because it has not been made public. Now, our researchers at the University of California, San Francisco made this statement. Our results support the effectiveness of broadly extending expiration dates for many drugs. They pointed out that extending shelf life can significantly lower costs to consumers. Now, limitations of the analysis the investigators write include an inability to confirm the actual storage conditions of the drug samples, as well as perhaps imprecise dating. They really don't know. However, this brings me to this conclusion. Do not throw away medications that are in pill or capsule form after their expiration date if you are stockpiling medical supplies for a collapse. Liquid medications are different. Insulin or liquid pediatric antibiotics, these formulations cause them to degrade too quickly. Now a sign of this might be a change in the color of the liquid, but that actually may not occur. So my recommendation is try not to accumulate drugs in liquid form unless you have no other choice. On the other hand, most tablets or capsules will be effective when we no longer have the ability to mass produce these medicines, even if they might lose some potency over time. I'm aware this is against the conventional medical wisdom, and more research is needed, certainly. But we may find ourselves in a situation one day when something is better than nothing. I encourage you also to research natural remedies that may have antibacterial action, such as garlic and honey. Remember that drugs retain their effectiveness, even natural remedies, when they are stored in cool, dry, dark locations. Planning ahead, we all must consider alternatives in the effort to stay healthy in hard times. Use all the tools in the medical woodshed and don't ignore any option that can help you achieve that goal. Before I finish, I'd like to encourage all our listeners and readers to make a donation to our wounded heroes by going to the Wounded Warrior Project website, that's woundedwarrior.org. You'll be doing a lot of good for a lot of deserving men and women who have made major sacrifices to keep you safe. This is Dr. Bones of doomandbloom.net, and I thank you for listening and watching this video.